I have a logo design brief right here in my hand and today we'll walk through an entire process of creating a logo from scratch. We'll start with research, move on to building a mood board, develop logo sketches and finally craft the completed logo. But wait, you must be wondering, Anik, you are not in your regular studio where you probably have a very powerful monitor. With AQ Color technology, simplified connectivity and an increase in digital workspace for maximum productivity. Well, not anymore. Let me introduce you to BenQ PD3225U, a 32-inch IPS Black 98% P3-4K Pro Designer Monitor. Yup, it's really a big deal. Well, that's the monitor right behind us. It literally took me less than 5 minutes to set it up. And um, I mean, it just completely changed the entire look of my cabin in the office. And now it's time to read our brief. The company name is Lunar and the description is that we are a company that makes and distributes Italian drinks. Our main product is made with a secret recipe and served in your favorite diners. Our target audience is young adults. We want to convey a sense of fame while also at the same time being business-like. Pretty interesting brand. Um, I mean, Italian drinks, I don't know any as such Italian drinks, but I mean, that's where our research will come in handy. Then the job description is, you must create a logo using the given information in the brief, of course. They would prefer a pictorial mark that uses the color white. The logo will be used on the company website, take into the account that company's values and preferences and make sure it will work for the planned use cases. All right, that was our logo design brief. Now we will start with research and um, I would say I will spend about, let's say 20 more minutes for doing the research. I'll search about the the current um, trending Italian drinks, what exactly are Italian drinks like? Let's say if you ask someone in India, what is the famous drink here? Obviously it's chai, but uh, would love to know what's Italian's famous or favorite drink and would love to study the competitors and the name is also Lunar. So I'm pretty happy that's a one word name. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm excited. Let's get to our research on our Benke monitor. Before diving into any logo design project, the first and the most crucial step I take is conducting thorough research on the brand and the industry we are designing for. For example, today we are tasked with creating a logo design for an Italian beverage brand. The process begins with understanding the competitive landscape. We will explore existing Italian brands in the same category, study their visual identity, color schemes, typography, and overall design language. This research not only informs our creative direction, but also ensures our design stands out while remaining authentic to the brand's roots. When doing research, having multiple screens open on your monitor is an essential, and that's where BenQ Monitor really stands out. With its 31.5-inch screen, you've got more than enough space to multitask and work effortlessly. Whether it's opening multiple tabs or switching between different design softwares or even having a review reference side by side, it is enough, it is spacious, but not overwhelming. Oh, I didn't even show you the best part. So, you know, as content creators, we give ourselves an excuse that I'm just scrolling reels not because I'm addicted to it, but because I'm doing some part of my research. Well, with this monitor, right now you can see it's in a vertical form like how normal monitors are. But if you want, you can literally pick this up and just like that, Rotate it completely 180 degrees. I mean, how cool is that? This flexibility makes it perfect for different working styles, giving you the space and speed to stay productive and much more efficient. We are finally done with the research on our monitor and huge thanks to Benke because without this 32 inch monitor, I would not be able to open multiple different tabs and you know work simultaneously on different softwares altogether. And I feel like my research work has also drastically uh, improved and the speed has increased because uh, literally because of this monitor right here. So huge thanks to that. And after a thorough research, here are some of the learnings. So Italy is probably one of the most famous places for liquor and this liquor called Aperitivo is probably one of the most popular liquor in Italy. It's like a very low alcohol kind of a drink and the brand leading in this category is called Campari. Here is how uh, the box packaging or the bottle packaging of the brand looks like. So of course we'll have Lunar uh, the brand selling Aperitivo. When I was doing research on Italy's history, I remember the time when I was studying about the Renaissance period, about uh, the Gothic movement, uh, about the Art Nouveau movement, all those uh, historical times and especially Renaissance because 
uh, there was this guy called Giotto di Bondo. I, I probably don't know how to pronounce his name, but he is considered as the father of Renaissance, and his artwork was drastically and very influential in the Renaissance period. And when we start working on the logo sketches, we'll definitely take some inspiration from his artwork. Here are some of his artwork in case you haven't seen it. In the brief, it was also written that we have to use a pictorial mark that uh, uses the color white. So, of course, um, um, uh, having a pictorial mark, I thought, let's just search uh, the National Board of Italy and it came as the Italian Sparrow. So, we'll use that as a pictorial mark. We'll create a nice um, a nice mark, a nice representation of a sparrow in, in, a, in, a, flat, in a flat 2D graphic. And we're gonna add that with the logo itself. Keeping in mind, uh, this brand is for the young adults. So it should not be too playful or should not be uh, too serious as well. We have to have that right spot in the middle and sort of play along with a good type. Uh, and uh, one thing which I've also noticed uh, while I was looking at a lot of logos of wine bottles or alcohol companies in Italy, a lot of the typefaces had drop shadow. They look vintage and it also looks very much premium because I'm sure it's much, very much expensive as well. So I think we'll keep that in mind when we work on the logo type as well. With that, we can finally start with my favorite part, which is sketching and brainstorming. For sketching, I'll use this sketchbook right here and brainstorming, we can't use anything else but the BenQ monitor, which is right here. So for brainstorming, it is very much necessary. You have a large space, like a blank, a big blank canvas because uh, you just need to throw out ideas, what, whatever comes in your mind, you just need to put it out there. And I think this will really help. So let's quickly start doing that. I like to use something called the noun method. It is by one of my good friends, Alan Peters, um, which involves using two, three nouns, which best describes the brand and try to combine them with simple shapes and forms. For this, we are trying to use the Sparrow, the Italian national bird, and trying to combine that with the art style of Giotto, which he did in the Renaissance period, which were really influential and really famous. I also love having a mind map before even I start with my sketches because having a mind map and just exploring with as many ideas, whatever is in your head, just really, really puts down in perspective on every exploration, everything you have tried to do. And of course, this 32 in screen, it is just enormous. It is really, really helpful. I don't even need to scroll down or scroll out of the space. I mean, I can just have my entire mind map right here and it is more than the space required for me right now. Okay, so here is the digitized logo. What I've tried to do here, uh, initially in my sketch, which you can see, Right here, this one, I had the sparrow much bigger in a bigger proportion, but I felt like in terms of hierarchy and also in terms of legibility, I wanted Luna to be highlighted more. The sparrow should be a small element and not a, a main, a big picture and a big part of the brand. I, um, I'm i not also very happy with how the sparrow has turned out and somewhat it also looks like a peacock. And now that I say it, it does look like a peacock. but. I wanted to have that brush stroke kind of an effect, like as, as if it was like painted with a stroke, uh, of course, from our Renaissance artist and created um, this sort of a lockup. We have this uh, typeface right here, which I have coned it very tightly. And I feel like I'm really happy with how the type has turned out. It looks very nice and I can see it um, on a, a nice fancy like bottle packaging. So overall, I won't say like this is like the, my best result so far, but I am really happy with how I could, you know, I was able to produce this so quickly. Now that we have our logo digitized, we will start with the color palette. But before that, you might have noticed that my office space, like my cabin has a huge gallery. Now, obviously it's, it's a little dark right now, but in the morning, in the start of, in the, start of the video, it was very, very bright and shiny. And uh, you must be wondering, Anik, how were you able to see the desktop? Wasn't the glare affecting you and the, the work you were doing? I mean, not at all. I mean, just, just look at how bright the desktop is, I mean, my, my face even got darker. It's all because of the help of the IPS black panel, which this BenQ monitor has, that I'm able to see all the blacks perfectly, all the brightness, it's really, really perfect. In fact, there is one more cool thing. So there, there is a nice toggle right here, where I can change the brightness to whatever literally I want to. I usually set it to around 50%, which is, I think, perfect for me. I think it's a little even more for me. But if you 
literally is your, if your desktop is literally right against the gallery or against the window space i think about 60 70 percent will be enough for you i don't know who keeps it on 100 but yeah i mean it's a pretty bright uh, monitor in fact this slide which you see right here on my face is all from the monitor because it has become dark right now when working throughout the entire day and for some of you if you still feel like this is not bright enough or if you are not able to concentrate if there's too much light if there is maybe not too much light then I have one more thing for you. Let me introduce you to the screen bar Halo. This light bar is the perfect addition to the monitor, especially for someone who is working on the device for longer hours. And you already know as graphic designers spend a lot of time and a lot of hours on a computer. Now, before we finalize the color of the logo, let me quickly show you three things which I really like about this screen bar Halo. First is there are three light modes, the precious front light, the immersive backlight and the eye carrying front and backlight. Since the monitor is not close to a wall, I prefer the second mode, perfect for when I'm working for longer hours on this exact desk. Second feature which I really like about this screen bar Halo is they are real-time auto dimming. So as you can see right now, uh, there is literally no sun outside, it's almost dark. And there is this button here, right here for auto dimming. So if I just press this one, you see, you see the change in color? it has automatically dimmed its light. Third thing which I really like about the screen bar Halo is its actual design. Being a designer, I noticed a lot of good design around me. And while looking at the screen bar Halo, I was wondering, why do they have this weird clamshell thing at the back? And not to my surprise, of course, there was it was very much intentional and there was a big purpose behind it. With this patent clamp shape, they're able to hold the bar very firmly while also not letting it touch to the monitor screen, further saving it from any scratch or any marks. I also have a BenQ webcam which has a similar clamp-like design uh, to hold it in the back and and the OGs have seen that one. It's it's in my studio and not right here. But I'm very much happy to have this Halo bar because um, I, when I'm working at night or when I'm working on a very, very super bright sunny day, this will literally save my eyes. It will save me from all the glare which comes on the screen. And when I turn on the backlight, it's just a very nice aesthetic to have it in your office. And uh, we've chosen a color palette which I think really fits with the brand, with uh, everything what we have discussed so far. Um, I mean, I mean the color quality which you see right here with the AQ color technology is going to be exactly the one which will be there produced in the print. So I think I'm pretty much happy with this color. I've also kept the Sparrow a little lighter shade of this burgundy color which I've used um, just to keep it a more, a more subtle and so that people don't notice it because I think it looks like a peacock. But anyways, um, yeah, there you go guys. This is our logo and there you have it. This was uh, a fun day. Uh, I mean, literally spent an entire day here. So folks, that was it from me. All the links to all the products I've shown in this video will be down in the description. If you buy any of them, do use the link which I've put in the description. And yeah, and trust me, honestly, this is a very, very good monitor if you're considering to work in a, in a huge screen, which really, really helps you if you are a designer. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.